Hey everyone, I am going to talk about a ton of the new items, including crops, machines, resources, tools, you name it in the 1.6 update since I spent most of the last week gathering them. Since we are talking about new content in 1.6, here is a Stardew spoiler warning. For quality of life changes, I made this video. Link is in the description, so check that out. And for events, festivals, and balance changes, those will come in a future video. Let's get started. Oh, and if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. First up, we have the mystery box. You can gather these once Mr. QI releases them around the map, which happens after one of two conditions are met, which will happen in the first year. And then you can get Clint to break them open as you would any other geode. And there is a very large variety of items that could be inside. Then we have the golden mystery box. These are unlocked through the mastery pathway, which I will cover way more in depth in another video. But because other items in this video are obtained this way, Here's the quick rundown. Once you hit level 10 in all skills, you unlock a mastery pathway. And when you hit certain experience intervals, you can unlock a capstone mastery for each skill. These gold mystery boxes contain even rarer items than the regular mystery box. Golden animal crackers. This is also unlocked through the mastery pathway and it can be fed to one animal which will double their production permanently. You can see which animals have eaten a golden animal cracker in this screen here. Star drop tea. This was one of the items I was most curious about in the sneak peek, and it did not disappoint. It is a new universally loved gift. It gives a full heart for birthdays or three full hearts at the Winter Star Festival. The other cool thing about this item is it does not count towards the weekly or daily gift limits. Moving on to the new crops and plants. The four new crops are really interesting because you can't buy them in any shop. You can find them by digging in the seed digging spots. They have a distinct green grass tip on them or a variety of other ways that I won't spoil at this time. For spring, we have carrots. This is a very simple, quick to grow crop. It only takes three days, and thanks to your helpful comments in my last video, I learned you can feed them to your horse as a snacky. Well deserved since my horse runs me around everywhere all day. We have summer squash, which is grown in six days, and you can reharvest every three. Broccoli is new for fall, and it's on an eight day grow schedule and a four day reharvest cycle. You can maybe tell from my formation I was hoping we were getting giant broccoli, but we did not. However, speaking of giant crops, we have a new winter crop powder melon. Finally, a large crop for winter, and it's only a seven day growth time. We also have mixed flower seeds. They grow random flowers of the season that they are planted in, in which you can get from harvesting weeds or tilling, or Lewis's prize machine. The Bluegrass Starter. This is a brand new walnut room prize using 40 QI gems. I thought this grass might endure a little bit more eating than regular grass so you wouldn't have to replant as often, but it's just a different color and makes animals like you faster. So still very useful, just not in the way I hoped. We have a new resource, which is moss. Moss grows on mature trees and is now used in a bunch of crafting recipes. You can also make moss soup which is a new recipe in 1.6. We also have mossy seeds. There isn't a ton of information on the trees they grow yet, but if you plant them off the farm by other wild trees, apparently moss will grow much quicker. I'm really interested to see how this develops. You can get these from cutting fiber or shaking or chopping down a mossy tree. Also obtained through the mastery path is mystic tree seeds. This is one of the things I am most excited about. Not only are these going to be insane for farm design, but they also grow a new artisan good, which is mystic syrup that even grows in the winter. This syrup is an artisan good that is used to craft bluegrass, which I already mentioned, and an item we will talk about really soon. My recommendation for these trees is to use a heavy tapper. We also have text signs, which you can now write fun little messages on, such as, oh, oh yeah, if you're enjoying the video, please leave a like so that other 1.6 players can find this too. We have books, people, 19 of them to be exact. You can find them in all sorts of ways, but the important thing here is that they all give you some experience, so very useful if found early, or give you other permanent perks, such as running faster or being able to use Marnie's shop when she isn't there, which of course is never. We also have larger versions of wood and stone chests. I really wish I hadn't just spent 
hours and hours organizing this chest hutch, but you can put a big chest onto a little chest to upgrade it, so not all the time was wasted. I am so pumped you now get 5 full rows of storage, and it will contain 70 items versus 36 in the regular size chest. We have 3 changes to tools. Copper pan can now be upgraded at Clint's the same way as other tools, all the way up to iridium, and they will find increasingly rarer items. The iridium scythe obtained from the mastery path can harvest every kind of crop and has a further reach. It is so fun. I didn't even think I would like it as much as I did, but it has been a blast. The advanced fishing rod, also from the mastery path, gives you two bobber slots instead of one. Now catching legendary fish and octopus will be, well, slightly less aggravating. Now let's talk about some of the new machines in 1.6. We have the mushroom log, which can grow mushrooms on it. You can craft it at foraging level four. Bait maker makes specific fish baits. As you can see in this clip, I put this halibut into the bait maker and the halibut turned into halibut specific bait, which increases your chances to catch pike. Heavy furnaces, also obtained through the mastery path, are not only crafted from regular furnaces, so you can basically exchange them in, but they are much more space and resource efficient. You have to craft five bars at a time, but it only takes three coal, so you save two coals every time you use it, and the cooking times are the same. We have the Statue of Blessings, which to no one's surprise is a mastery item as well. You get a random blessing every single day. We also have another mastery path machine, and that is the dwarf statue. It lets you pick from a couple of different mining perks for the day. For these next machines, let's go to the beach. Beach, deluxe worm bin, which upgrades the regular worm bin, and it creates a better bait. And then we have a fish smoker, which greatly increases the value of fish. And if you start on the Riverlands farm, you actually start with a free fish smoker. We also have the anvil, which I'll talk more about in a moment. But of course, it's another machine obtained from the mastery pathing. We also have the mini forge. I'm really excited about this one because it's basically the Dwarvish Forge in a portable version that you don't have to leave your farm for. It works exactly the same. You just don't have to travel to Ginger Island and through the volcano dungeon, or at least through the back entrance once you've completed the run. I always want to experiment with different enchantments, different ring combinations, but going all the way to the forge and remembering what to bring is really annoying. So now you can just set up a chest and a workbench maybe and start playing around. You will just need some cinder shards because every time you unforge, you won't get your full refund. Another one of my favorite things in this update is the dehydrator. It turns fruit into dried fruit and mushrooms into dried mushrooms. I think this could be really cool to not have to go so heavy into the kegs and wine, but let's be real, we probably still will. One thing I will note here is you have to put five of each fruit or mushrooms into the dehydrator for it to work. And I have realized, unless this gets patched later, they all have to be the same quality. So keep that in mind. We also have a new special item, which is raisins. So raisins are created from drying five grapes, and they are used specifically for the Junomo huts. So what happens is if you take these raisins over to the Junomo hut and place it in their inventory, overnight it will consume it and for one week, your Junimos will have a chance to double harvest your crops. You can also stack more raisins for the coming weeks as many times as you want. So as long as this little sign is in front of your Junimo hut, they have a chance to double harvest. All right, we also have prize tickets. These are obtained from repeating wins on a few of the festivals, like the Egg Festival, and then you can also get them from Billboard Quest. These are used in a machine in Mayor Lewis's house, and you can get some pretty cool prizes, including the infamous Star Drop Tea that we already talked about. Treasure Totems, this is something that the Mystic Syrup crafts into, also unlocked through the Mastery Pathing, and it spawns a ring of diggable spots. 
so you can get some extra artifacts or treasures. This one is mostly just for fun in my opinion. We also have tent kits. This allows you to build a tent that you can sleep in for one night. You wake up in the same spot where you place the tent. Butterfly powder. This allows you to remove pets. You can undo this, it's permanent. But personally, I would rather... All right, let's talk about fishing items. We have the sonar bobber. This shows the fish that is on your line before you catch it, so you can decide if it's even worthwhile. This will come in handy when you are doing billboard quests that require you to catch a certain amount of a type of a fish. Challenge bait. This allows for up to three fish to be caught at once, but loses one each time the fish leaves the bobber bar. So if you're really good at fishing, this can allow you to significantly increase your production. Deluxe bait. This gets fish biting faster than regular bait. So pair that with the advanced iridium rod and you have a really good chance to catch a legendary fish because it also increases the size of your catch bar. Now we have sea jelly, river jelly, and cave jelly. It's a new item that you can fish and I found it really hard to catch them at first. Basically, long story short is luck significantly increases your chance to catch these. There's also now a goby fish. It's a poisonous fish caught at the waterfalls and it makes a perfect gift for a perfect someone. We also have mannequins which can be dressed. They are split into male and female but since all the clothes can be worn by anyone it doesn't really matter which one or ones you buy. So I highly recommend starting a fashion museum. This next section I am nowhere near completing getting all of these but I wanted to give you a quick recap. We have 25 new hats including this fun one inspired by the traveling cart. 280 new pieces of furniture, 41 new floor styles, 24 new wallpaper styles, new unique furniture catalogs, which contain themed furniture sets. I don't think I've found them all, but so far I have found the wizard one, which has a magical spooky vibe to it, and a Junma one, which has an outdoorsy vibe to it. They're both really cool and I cannot wait to redecorate my farm. There's also some secret items. I've only heard of a couple so far, but I don't really want to spoil the secret items yet because I have a feeling they're really cool based on what I've seen, so I might just cover that in a later video. We also have spouse portraits. This can be purchased after reaching 14 hearts. I got mine from the traveling cart. I don't know if that was just random luck or not, but it's so funny having a portrait of your spouse right above your bed. We also have seven trinkets. So remember we talked about the anvil? You can unlock a trinket slot in your inventory once you unlock the combat mastery. Enemies will randomly drop one of seven trinkets and you can use them to power up your caving and combat experience. The two I found were the spur, which grants you a speed boost every time that you crit on an enemy. I also have the ice rod, which I made a little bit of a deep dive video on here. And this one is my absolute favorite. It freezes enemy in your pass. I'll put the other ones up here for you to see, but I haven't quite got them yet. And I have spent so much time in the mines and I just can't seem to get them. But some of these ones will summon an animal or just do some extra damage for you to help you combat really busy caves. And these other ones seem to do something really cool as well. So here's where the anvil comes in. You can use the anvil to reroll the stats on each trinket. So for example, the spur, when you crit, you get a six second speed boost, but I just used the anvil to reroll it. And now I have a 10 second speed boost. So you can do a lot of experimenting with this. Last but not least, we have fireworks. These can be purchased from Mr. QI for one QI gem, and they're just really fun to use. So the green ones make a really cool arrangement. The purple ones make a star drop formation. And the best for last, because I'm so thankful that you watched this video all the way to the end, is a red heart. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you at the next video.